When plants display symptoms of disease, while I am not an advocate of cutting or slicing anything out that is only spoiling the aesthetics, sometimes it is absolutely necessary to prune out the disease, damaged or dead plant tissue. However, disease pathogens can catch a ride on your pruners or other tools, even pots, when reused, possibly infecting the next plant you use them on. Sterilizing pruning tools and pots between uses can help prevent the spread of diseases and any risk of cross-contamination is marginally reduced. Thank you to Orchid Ninja Nina N. Sun for requesting a video on how to sterilize pruners, snips, knives, scalpels, tweezers, basically anything that comes in contact with your plants. And while I will not always repeat sterilizing pots, I am including that and will give you some pointers further into the video. I hope that this video will provide you with the many different ways on how to sterilize your tools and you can find a method that fits with how you go about growing your orchids safely as well as where you are in the world because not all products are available everywhere. So I'm going to stick with those that in fact are easily sourced no matter where you find yourself with the exception of one maybe. While keeping the tools we use clean by rinsing them after use, this will not result in our tools being sterilized. Clean, yes, to the eye, but not sterilized. Oh, and please help the channel out by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe as well. These two simple steps are super helpful and support the longevity of the video and channel on this platform. There are many other ways to support the channel via monetary methods and know that each of those pledges are greatly appreciated. However, the the best way you can support the orchids and their existence on the patio is if you were to become a member of the channel and Orchid Ninja. A pledge like that? Well, if you have listening between the lines skills, then please implement them right here because I do not want to get emotional. Thank you to all Orchid Ninjas for your incredible support and vote of confidence. Phew! YouTube housekeeping can be a chore, but we are here to talk about the housekeeping chores we have to do for our plants. To sterilize our tools, the cutting parts are usually dipped, soaked, sprayed or wiped with a disinfectant known to kill off plant disease pathogens. Remember that different disinfectants work better on certain plant diseases than others, but some, while they may kill off plant pathogens, they can also be harmful to the tools and unhealthy to the handler. Should you find yourself in a situation in which you have to use some Top Gun disinfectants, please always use PPE so that you do not expose yourself to any harmful fumes or possible splashes, sprays, mists that can land in your eyes, nose, and other mucus areas, which could then turn out to be extremely irritating. Here are some of the most common disinfectants for anything that comes into contact with your orchids. Bleach is very inexpensive to use as a tool sanitizer. It is mixed at a ratio of one part bleach to nine parts water. The tools, or at least the tools blades, should be soaked in the bleach water for 30 minutes, then rinsed and left to dry. If you are in the process of making several cuts on the same plant, please dip your pruner blades in bleach and water between each cut. The problem with bleach is that it gives off harmful fumes and it will damage the metal, rubber, and plastic of some tools in time. It can also damage clothing and other surfaces. So when using bleach, please ensure you are using the appropriate PPE and and if at all possible, do it in the great outdoors where there's a lot of ventilation. I use this bleach concentration a lot because it is simple, it speeds up the process of trimming the infected areas off the plant without any waiting period in between each cut. However, as reference, bleach will damage some materials and plastic is very much affected when it comes in contact with bleach. So, if you have plastic pots that you keep for future use on your orchids, please do not bleach them to sterilize them because I happen to have first-hand experience that many of my pots treated with bleach started to brittle prematurely while those not treated had two more years of a lifespan in them. When it comes to sterilizing plastic pots, other options that I will mention will prove as effective and maintain the integrity of your pots. When it comes to clay pots, soaking them in this bleach solution is absolutely effective. However, after the sterilizing soak and prior to use, soak them once again in plain water only to leach out the bleach that will be left in the clay so that your roots won't have any issues once they reach the pot. 
Isopropyl alcohol is also inexpensive to use. 70 to 100% alcohol to sterilize whatever comes in contact with your plants is very effective. No mixing, soaking, or rinsing is necessary with sterilizing your tools and equipment with alcohol. The tools can simply be wiped, sprayed, or dipped in isopropyl alcohol for immediate effectiveness against most pathogens. However, it also has unpleasant fumes and can be flammable. Still, most experts recommend isopropyl alcohol for sterilizing anything that comes into contact with your plants. Now one important detail when using alcohol is that the evaporation of the alcohol is the mechanism by which sterilization happens. If the tool is damp with alcohol after a mist and it is still dripping, please wait until everything is completely dry because a wet tool saturated with alcohol is not sterile until the alcohol has completely evaporated. There are all sorts of household cleaners like Lysol, Pine Sol, and Listerine that are sometimes used to sterilize tools. While they're a bit more expensive than bleach or rubbing alcohol, keep in mind the effectiveness of these products on plant pathogens has not been scientifically determined, although many experts recommend using these common household products for sterilizing purposes. A quick reminder though, it is possible that some household cleaners can be corrosive to our tools and pots as well. And if using household cleaners like this, please use at full strength in form of a spray, dip or soak. And always, please, if you're going with a product that could be potentially harmful if not used correctly, please be certain to follow the label's safety precautions. With the previously mentioned easily accessible products, no matter where you find yourself in the world, I cannot do a video like this without mentioning Fisan 20. To my understanding, this product is not readily available worldwide, but it is widely available and is a great product for a broad range of uses when it comes to disinfecting. It works works as a fungicide, a viricide, an algicide, which controls a plethora of pathogens on hard surfaces and plants. Because of the broad range of uses the Fisan 20 concentration product offers, there are also different doses of how to use it, at which strength, for different circumstances. So I'm going to link an article in the description which you can use to see which concentration is suitable for what your plant's symptoms are displaying. If you can get your hands on Fisan 20 know that you are pretty much set and the shelf life can last 10 to 15 years. You won't be out of pocket should you decide to acquire this product. In the long run, it is as cost effective and versatile as all the options I already mentioned. But wait, there is one more method of getting tools sterilized which is supposedly foolproof, but in my opinion needs to really be handled with care, and that is heat. A lot of heat. A flamethrower of sorts, but in small, identified as gas torches or if you like to caramelize your creme brulee and take another handy gadget out of your kitchen to use with your orchids, then a small gas torch like that is perfect for sterilizing all the metal parts of your tools. Alternatively, if you do not have such a torch, instead you have a gas stove, you can use the flame there as well. But I really want to make clear that you please proceed with caution. You may also consider using a typical lighter, but know that the tools will need to be exposed to the flame for a very long time unless you are able to have a large part of the flame that is blue. That is the hottest area of the flame and should be the target for the areas of your tools to be sterilized. Everything else will just result in your tools getting hot, eventually sterilized, but full of soot as well, which can be easily wiped off. But if you're going to do this method, please, please be careful and go for the blue part of the flame, which speeds the whole sterilization process up exponentially. Regardless of which product you choose, being diligent about keeping your tools and pots clean is very important to keeping your plants healthy. And here comes a little top tip for all of you that are still here with me in this video. Thank you so, so much for being here and clicking on it. A longer soaking may be necessary for the pruning surfaces that are not smooth. So if you're using any kind of tool that has some rough edges that is a little bit serrated, I don't know, maybe has a sandpaper effect in its blade, 
anything along those lines, please soak a little bit longer than recommended. And ideally, tools should be disinfected after working on every plant. However, if this is not practical for you because of time constraints, if possible, rotate between several tools while working with your plants. This way, one tool can be disinfected while you work with another. After dipping all your tools, be sure to wipe away any excess disinfectant before moving on to the next cut or next plant. And please do not forget to let the alcohol evaporate completely to guarantee that your tool is in fact sterile. Whether you have one tool for your entire collection or many that you rotate between, it is important to sterilize as frequently as possible as well. Even if something tells you, nah, it's not necessary, it's fine. If you can get into the habit of being pedantic about sterilizing your tools, you won't have to think back, did I or didn't I? Because remember, clean tools are an important part of sanitation when working with plants and can prevent the spread of disease-causing pathogens. And of course, there are several different types of disinfectants used in commercial agriculture, which we could also name here and use for our plants. But they are typically available only through horticulture supply vendors. If you have other options that you implement with your plants, please add them in the comments. But please, if you're going to do that, thank you very much in advance. Also, add where in the world you are located so that anyone who is looking for more information can see if what product you are suggesting is a match based on where they are located in this beautiful world of ours. Additional information like this points many in the right direction and you taking the time to do that, sharing your experience in the comments is greatly appreciated. With that being said, I am going to thank you so much for watching, for being so supportive and generous with your time. If you have watched to the end, which also gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on the condition though that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.